Hello, and welcome to this last video for this lab, where we introduce a slightly different topic of one-tailed z-scores. So up to this point, we've now measured the power in our power law for the period of a pendulum. In the terrible data that I used to make all these tutorial videos and everything, we ended up with a power of 0 0.30 plus or minus 0.23. And hopefully you do a little bit better. In this particular case, we actually know the true value. The true value has to be 0.05. If you think about the units of the gravitational field G in meters per second squared, instead of kilogram, newtons per kilogram, you can easily see through unit analysis that the power has to be 0 0.5. This has to be a square root. The question is, is, are these two results consistent with each other? And if so, how can we quantify that? So that's what we're looking to explore here. And the way we're going to begin is, is maybe a little weird. We're going to begin by thinking about all the theoretically possible values for P that we might have measured. If we had done this exact same experiment, exactly how I did it, a bajillion times, we would get a different value for P each time we did that experiment all the trials, all the oscillations, do everything. Repeat that a bajillion times, we'll get a different value of P each time. In this lab course, we assume that the standard deviation of our data is the same as the standard deviation of our population. And in the case of my dummy data, we got a standard deviation of 0 0.231. So what we can then do is we can then imagine a population of all these different possible p-values that we might measure. And if we assume that these possible values for p are normally distributed, the result would be a Gaussian with a mean of 0 0.5, because that's the true value, and then a standard deviation equal to the standard deviation of our data, whatever we happen to measure it to be. So in the case of our dummy data, uh, 0 0.231. Now, this normal assumption may not be valid, and in particular in this case, because negative powers maybe get a little weird here, but let's run with it for the purposes of this analysis. As always, you should really check and really think about it, but for the purposes of this analysis, we're going to treat it as normal and just acknowledge that we're probably making a mistake here. Okay, so the question that I want to answer is, what's the probability of getting my measurement? I measured P to be 0 0.30, right? I measured that power to be 0 0.30. What's the probability of getting that power or less, given that we know the true value? So I want to know what's the probability of getting my value, 0 0.30, or some value less than that? So any number less than 0 0.30. That's what we want to know, OK? So the first step is we calculate what's known as z, which is the number of standard deviations your result is away from the mean. And so how would I calculate the number of standard deviations away from the mean? Well, I would take my value, in this case, 0 0.30, although in calculations, we always keep a lot more digits. And I would subtract the mean, 0 0.5, and divide by my standard deviation. And in this particular case, I would be minus 0 0.8707. So that means that I'm 0 0.8707 standard deviations below, and that's what this minus sign is, the mean. So I'm pretty close. I'm within one standard deviation. So such a result like this should be pretty likely, actually, just by chance. And the question is, how likely is getting this answer? Well, we're going to go back to the very beginning, where when we talked about the normal distribution and standard deviation in the very first lab of this entire series, we said that the area under the normal distribution is probability. And we talked about it briefly. We said that if you're within one standard deviation, that is a probability of 68%. So 68% of the time, you'll be within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of the time, you'll be within two standard deviations of the mean, and so forth. 
And we also mentioned that one of the properties of the normal distribution is that if you measure in standard deviations, like we've done here, then the probability doesn't change because I can either stretch the standard deviation or squeeze it. It doesn't matter in terms of standard deviations, all of these probabilities remain the same. So since area is probability, if I wanna know the probability of measuring a power of 0 0.30 or less, then I need to know the area under this Gaussian all the way from negative infinity all the way up to 0 0.30. So this area here shaded in green. That's what we need to do. No. So back in the olden times, you had to go, you calculated Z, and then you looked it up in some big table in some book. But we fortunately live in the 21st century, and so we can do this directly within our spreadsheets. So I'm going to open up uh, an example spreadsheet so we can see what we do. The first step is I'm going to go and calculate Z, and that is our measurement minus our standard deviation divided by our uh, uncertainty, our standard deviation. <clears throat> and you see I get this negative 0 0.87 number that we just had. Now, if when I want to convert this to probability, when I want to figure out the area, there's a function for that, of course. We're not actually going to use norm this time. We're going to use norm dist. Dist is the function we're going to use. And we want to know for this measurement that we made, given the true mean that we happen to know in this case, that's pretty unusual, but we happen to know it here. And this standard deviation, we want to know the area. So we enter true, because that's going to tell us the area. And we'll end up with a probability of 0 0.1919. If we had put false for this last argument, the function would have spit out not the area, but instead the value of the black curve at this point. And that's not what we want. We want the area. So that's why we put true as that last argument. And then maybe we multiply it by 100 to you know, make it a nice percent. So 19.2%. So to interpret 19.2%, that's like 20%, which means that I should expect to get a power of 0 0.30 or less 20% of the time. That's one time in five. That's pretty common. So that's, that's not that weird of a situation. Okay. Now, maybe your result isn't less than 0.5. Maybe your result's a little bit bigger than 0.5. So let's explore what happens if, if that were the case. So what if instead of 0 0.3, I measured closer to 0 0.8? Right? What would be the probability of being that far away from the true answer of 0 0.5 or more? So now my, you know, my, my measurement is this 0 0.798, and I want to know what's the probability of getting that number or any measurement bigger than that number. So graphically, we're looking at this area here under the bell curve. So everything from our measurement all the way up to positive infinity, what's that area? Well, there's one issue. The norm function that we used here in our spreadsheet to get the probability of this norm dist always sums from neck up. It goes from negative infinity all the way up. So if we want the green area, which is 0.798 or higher, we'll have to do one minus. Because remember, this is a probability distribution. So the area under the whole thing has to be one. So if we want the green area, well, we can calculate the gray area using norm dist and then subtract it from one to get the area, the green area that we're interested in. So let's go through and see how to do this actually in a spreadsheet. I've set up a final sheet that won't be in your uh, workbook, but I'm going to use it here for our purposes. So once again, I'm going to go and calculate Z. 
because it's good to calculate it. Um, you sometimes see it in the literature Z directly quoted. So it's our value minus our mean divided by our standard deviation. So in this case, I get a Z of uh, positive 1.288. And then let's get the raw probability using norm dist. Right? So we're going to use this X value, our true mean, and our standard deviation, and true. And we see we get like a 90.9. But we need to remember that that's giving us this gray area. And that's pretty big. So 0.9 makes sense. But that's not what we actually want. We want the, the other side, right? So how would we get that? Well, we would do 1 minus this answer. And you see the result we get of uh, 0 0.098. Let's, again, multiply it by 100 to make it into a nice percent, but we, we, so you see I get 9.8%. Uh, so one time in 10, that is still really common occurrence. One time in 10 happens, you know, all the time. That's, that's not weird at all. So one time in 10, I'll measure 0.8 with the standard deviation of my process. Okay. So that's how you go and you do this in your spreadsheet. So to summarize up, the Z is the number of standard deviations. And that's really what a lot of statistics really boils down to when all is said and done is comparing numbers in terms of standard deviations. Because we know that the normal is, in, you know, as long as we're measuring in terms of standard deviations, the probabilities are all consistent. So that's why we you know, measure that way. And then we can convert this to a probability using the norm dist. And what we've done here are what are called one-tailed analyses. We've only looked at the probability of getting our result or further away from the mean. So the first case we did my result or less, and then the second case we did some hypothetical result that was bigger than 0.5 or more. We didn't do what's the probability of being, you know, one and a half sigma away from the mean. It's something in between. And that's called a two-tailed analysis. And that's something we'll experience in a future lab. This concludes this video.